Hello, everyone. Can you hear me all right? I hope your Thursday's going well. Mine certainly is. It's a you giving day. And I think at this point we've raised, what, 3000 Going on $4,000 for OU Esports, so we are doing awesome. We've had some really fun streams today. I checked in earlier, we were playing... Uh, oh, that penguin game where it's like two people and you're tied to a rope. Some plate up, which looked like a lot of fun. That was what was up just, just now. Had some media team members on. A whole lot of things. Right now we're going to be uh, switching. We're going for a different vibe. Let me switch over. So what I'm doing today is we're going to do a live reading of a book called Dragon of Doom, which, if you're familiar with the genre, is a choose-your-own-adventure book. Not the brand choose-your-own-adventure, but that kind of style. But it'd be boring if I just sat here and read a book and made all the decisions myself. So instead, every time that we hit a, uh, a fork in the road, a place where a decision can be made, I'm going to be putting a poll up in the chat, running it for like 30 seconds, maybe a minute, and then we will go with whatever the majority opinion is. So, given the track record of Twitch chats, I think it's probably going to go pretty poorly. We're probably going to die. A few times, maybe. But it will be fun. Okay, we can go ahead and get started. This can only go well. Yeah, exactly right, Noah. Oh, and by the way, I'm doing this through a really cool program on archive.org where you can um, you can rent a book out, which is really fun. I've got this for 14 days, basically. So it starts... Hold on. First off, I've, I've looked at, like, the first page, right? To make sure it's an actual book. It just... It throws you into it. It doesn't give you any buffer. It throws you straight in. But then it does give you buffer, and then it starts again. So I'm going to read that first page, and then we're going to skip forward, because I don't actually know what the beginning of this book is. Okay. Page one, staring into the eyes of death. In pursuit of the evil magician Zed, you, your new friend Saffron, and your faithful pseudo-dragon Hinoki have stumbled upon a fierce many-headed hydra in the dismal mists of the Great Swamp. Its tiny, cold eyes stare straight into yours, and it appears ready to strike at any moment. What will you do? Probably die, right? <laughs> Probably get killed by a hydra? That's what I'm betting on. Maybe I can fight it. If this is what you decide, turn to page 140. Maybe it hasn't seen us yet, and we can run away. If this is your decision, turn to page 77. Maybe I can use my magical ring of wishes, or maybe I can trick it. Whichever path you pick, you are sure to find adventure as you battle the mighty Dragon of Doom. Of Doom. Of Doom. Okay, let's skip ahead. Let's skip ahead to um, right here, and we'll read through this as well. You're about to set off on an adventure in which you, in all caps, YOU, will meet many dangers and face many decisions. YOUR choices will determine how the story turns out. So be careful. You must choose wisely. Do not read this book from beginning to end. Instead, as you are faced with a decision, follow the instructions and keep turning to the pages where your choices lead until you come to an end. At any point, YOUR choice could bring success or disaster. You can read Dragon of Doom many times with many different results. So if you make an unwise choice, go back to the beginning and start again. Good luck on your adventure. In this story, you are Morgan, a young magic user who has just received an urgent summons to appear before the venerable Council of Nine. Although you do not know the reason for the mysterious summons, you hope with all your heart that you are about to be entrusted with your first important quest. But first, share the thoughts of someone. No, something. Something very big, very sinister, and very terrifying. The great dragon stirs restlessly in its sleep. I'm assuming this is the dragon of doom. Let's go. Hi, Kate. Um, the great dragon stirs restlessly in its sleep, trying to ignore the summons that whispers in its ear. Gold, silver, and jewels caress its body as it burrows deeper into the pile of treasure. But the message continues to echo in its head. Come to me, I command you, O Shen, great dragon of doom. I've uttered the secret words and you must do my bidding. 
Come and you will have riches beyond belief. I seek revenge upon the world, and you are my weapon. Come to me now. One huge golden eye opens slowly. Black scales ripple up and down the dragon's immense length as the great creature stirs. The message repeats over and over inside its head, summoning, commanding, demanding. Shaking its massive black head back and forth, Shen crawls forth from the warm, dark cave where it has slumbered for the last four centuries. That's a long nap. I thought, I thought I was, I slept 11 hours twice this week and I thought I slept for a long time. Four centuries kind of tops that. Blinking wearily, it peers down upon the world it had left behind and finds it unchanged. Slowly, the dragon unfurls its enormous wings and stretches the muscles in its massive body. Opening its gaping mouth, Shen looses a roar that singes the earth below. It is wrong that I must serve man in his paltry needs, Shen rumbles. Man should serve me, Shen, the Dragon of Doom. They've dropped the name like three or four times at this point. There's only one like me in the entire universe. Where I am, there is death. I am supreme. I am Shen. Stiff with age and sleep, the dragon spreads its enormous wings and launches itself into the air toward the summoning message. The sky grows black with the mighty dragon's passage, and wherever its shadow touches, their life cease ceases to exist. And word spreads that Shen, the dragon of doom, is once more loose in the land. Please turn the page. Hello, Akruna. Hello, Starfidoodle. You stand before the Council of Nine, barely able to control your excitement. There is mingled with fear. Morgan, quavers the voice of Fazad. We're gonna get a lot of name drops. I wonder what the dragon's name is. Shin or Dragon of Doom? Morgan, quavers the voice of Fazad, the eldest of the Council. We have summoned you here today to propose to you a mission of great importance. 999 years ago, your venerable ancestor, Zed the Zealous, supreme magic user and member of the Council of Nine, was banished to Bald Mountain. <laughs> I think I think most mountains are bald, no? I've never seen a hairy mountain. As punishment for practicing forbidden magic, his period of repentance will soon end. You are his closest living relative and our youngest magic user. Therefore, we wish you to travel to Bald Mountain to escort him with home in honor. What say you? Your mouth grows dry and your heart pounds into your chest. Your mother's dying words echo in your mind. Morgan, you must do whatever you can to help your uncle. And remember how fortunate you are to have a pseudo-dragon. That's what we can see in our picture here. Pseudo-dragon. Treat it well. It shares your thoughts and will share its wisdom with you. Never think of it as a merely sm Never think of it as merely a small dragon who can mind link. Okay, th now they're now they're name dropping features. Mind link. One day it may help you to remove the black mark against our family's name. Honorable sirs, I'm honored to do so. You say as you step forward, your staff becomes tangled between your legs, and it is only with difficulty that you catch your balance. <laughs> oh, I thought he was like riding a broomstick there. Are you all right, young Morgan? Asks the council member. Snowcap could be considered unbald. <laughs> I don't snow snowcap is bald to me because it's like then it's all smooth, right? Smooth and white. <laughs> Poor mountain. <laughs> we can't let it die. I'm wondering if that's a uh, oh I can flip it. Oh that's fun. It's really hard to do. Oh it's like that, okay. Um I'm betting that's Hinoki right there. And I I, I wonder if this is just like an intro hook and maybe we can um, ignore that right okay well then let me hold on I'm curious Hinoki that sounds Japanese no I'm gonna open up a tab of deep L <laughs> let me open up a tab of deep L and we're gonna figure out okay here it is Hinoki Uh, it's a type of cypress tree. <laughs> Interesting. That probably wasn't necessary to know. <laughs> okay. Yes, sir, you answer, growling, growing red. It's just that sometimes I'm a little clumsy. Sometimes you even fall on me. This is a small voice in your ear as eight sharp little claws grip your shoulder. 
May Hinoki go with me? A little pseudo dragon queries Baron Be Baron Beta. That's like a sci-fi name. <gasps> Jackson, I can ban you. I can time you out. You know, I have mod perms. Um, I see no reason why not, as long as it does not hinder your quest. The day of Zed's release draws near. It's most important that you be there the moment the time barrier is lifted. It would not do to have Zed think we have forgotten him. Present him with our salutations and tell him that we await his return with great happiness. A fitting celebration awaits his return. You must also give him his ring of wishes, which was held in safe keeping for him. Holding the magic ring carefully, you bow to the council and make your way out of the chamber, trying hard not to stumble. As long as I don't hinder your quest, chuckles. Oh, wrong, wrong voice. <laughs> I'm not going to do super hard character voices. I would dare, actually. You know I would dare. Who do they think keeps you on your feet most of the time? Come on, Hinoki, I'm not that bad, you say, eyeing the small creature, which looks just like a miniature red dragon. You're not that good either. Remember that time when I was still in the egg and you fell on me and nearly squashed me? How clumsy is Morgan? Almost killed something. Oh, Hinoki, I've apologized for that a million times. It was an accident. That's okay. I like you anyhow. You're not so bad for a human. Hinoki murmurs as he nibbles on your ear with his sharp little teeth. I'm gonna get an ear piercing. Free dragon ear piercing. When do we leave? First thing in the morning. I don't really know where Bald Mountain is. All I know is that it's somewhere to the north. And that it's bald, probably. You're gonna get a map, aren't you? Of course I am. You don't think I just wander off in the general, general direction, do you? Never mind, don't answer that. You don't prepare fully enough, says Hinoki. You should lay your plans ahead of time, so that there will be as few unpleasant surprises as possible. But that's boring, you say. That's not boring, that's how you stay alive. I'm a magic user, you know. I is magic user what- Okay, so this book is from 83. How does the dragon remember? That's true! How does the dragon remember being born from the egg? How, how does it remember still being in the egg? Someone must have told it, right? Morgan probably... Okay, somebody, somebody's like... Oh, and when you were still in the egg, Morgan almost fell and crushed you. And Morgan was like... Seething. Like, that was a secret. Um, anyway, magic user... Is that a, is that a first edition thing? Because this book was made in 83. I don't know what edition they were on in 1983, but that does sound familiar that instead of wizard and sorcerer and all that, they had magic user? So maybe. Also, give me a second. I'm going to try to get chat on my screen. Nope, that's that's the printer. That's how I print my screen. <laughs> Whoops. Wrong one. Magic user was an OG D&D class? Okay, thank you. Yeah, I, I had a suspicion. This is my Brin and Lee Mulligan knowledge. That I keep locked up in there. You don't know everything yet. I know all the important stuff. I even got honors on my written exams. And I have my Uncle Zed's ring. You wouldn't use it, would you? Hinoki asks, horrified. What's wrong with using it? Not unless I had to, you answer. It's too powerful for you, and your uncle would, would be very angry. He'd understand, you reply smoothly. But inwardly, you are uncertain. It's not like I know my uncle. He's... It's been a good thousand years. Sorry, 999 years. <laughs> Printer reveal. <laughs> oh, AD and D. Okay. Um, early next morning, while the dew is still on the grass, you and Hinoki pass out of the castle and head north toward Bald Mountain. No, no choices yet. We're a good 12 pages in. The trip passes without incident until the morning of the third day. We should have spotted the mountain by now, insists Hinoki. I'm going to fly to the top of that knoll and take a look around. You stay here. We should never split the party. We should never split the party. Two, we came out. Oh, 84. Interesting. Magic user was probably outdated by then. You're as bad as mother, you groan. I'm supposed to be in charge. I'll go too. And ignoring Hinoki's protests, you climb to the top of the rocky knoll. That must be it, you say, pointing toward a black peak that thrusts up. Black? What kind of snow is black? It sure looks unfriendly. I'll bet Uncle Zed will be glad to see me. Be careful on the way down, says Hinoki. Oh, stop fussing. I'll be just fu- <laughs> I'll be just fu- You feel a loose rock shift under your foot and you begin to slide? 
Desperately, you try to regain your balance. Too late, you see the large black rock rising up before you. And there's a sickening thud and the world goes black. Morgan, Morgan, wake up, cries a tiny voice inside your head. That's the mind link, and you see a tiny pinpoint of light. Vaguely, you watch the dot, and slowly it grows larger, and the voice grows louder. Morgan, wake up! We'll be late for the time barrier. <laughs> That's such a weird sci-fi thing. The time barrier. Lazily, you listen to the words and wonder at their meaning. Moving seems much too difficult. Maybe you'll go back to sleep. If you don't wake up, I shall leave you and go on by myself. And don't blame me if the dire wolves eat you. Eaten by dire wolves? Hmm. That doesn't sound like much fun. No, it doesn't. No, no, it doesn't. Slowly, you open one eye to see Hinoki peering into your face. I thought you'd finally gotten yourself killed this time, says the pseudo-dragon. Come on, either you get up or I'm leaving. We've lost too much time thanks to your clever way of sending a clip. <laughs> it was faster, you can't argue that. I got down real fast. I must have knocked myself out, you say, rubbing a, a painful lump on the top of your head. How long was I out? All day and all night- holy crap! I hit my head hard. I was scared to death you would die. That long? Come on, we've got to get going. Maybe if I walk all night I can get there before the time barrier lifts. But even though you walk as fast as you can, you know that you're too late before you even reach the mountain. Look, Hinoki, smoke, you say, pointing to the plume of black smoke that stains the northern sky. All that day, the signs grow worse. Dead birds with greasy black smoke coating their plumage litter the ground. Then you begin to see other small creatures. Mice, snakes, rabbits, all with scorch marks on their bodies. Did... Did my uncle do this? The guy that we're here to save, did he do that? I don't like the look of this, you mutter. Hinoki, are you receiving any mind thoughts? <laughs> what? What? I think most thoughts are mind thoughts, Morgan. Fright. Pain. Death. Blackness says your pseudo-dragon nervously. If we link our minds, we'll be twice as powerful. Let's try it and see what we can see. Maybe Uncle Zed is hurt. Sitting down on a large rock, you push Hinoki on your knees and touch his head to your own. Slowly, you calm your heartbeat and breathe in and out with the pseudo-dragon as you look into the gold depths of his eyes. Gradually, a calming warmth steals over you and you enter a trance-like state. Your black pupils open wider and wider until you see a small, huddled figure lying on the ground. As you watch, the figure stirs, and a pain washes over you. You flinch from the pain, and the picture fades. Did you see him? It's Uncle Zed, and he's hurt! We've got to get there as soon as possible. Something terrible has happened, you say in a rush. For the remainder of that day and the following night, you walk, with fear your constant, your, your constant companion. If something's happened to Uncle Zed, the council will never forgive me, you say. Hinoki is strangely silent. Hinoki looks like the, uh... Oh, what is it? Child 13 or something? From... From the game with the cards. I'm thinking... The indie game with the cards. Does, does anybody know what I'm talking about? I'll leave that. I'll leave that thought. On the morning of the fifth day, you stand high on a mountain pass and look upon destruction that can scarcely be imagined. Bald mountain rises straight up before you, blasted barren and black, as though struck by all the lightning in the world. Charred remains of forests cast smoke into the mists. Rocks and boulders lie smashed as though shattered by a giant hammer. Oh my god, when do we get a choice? Okay, okay, we get a choice on the next page. In places, the very ground is ripped asunder, with molten rocks bubbling and fuming from the white cracks. Maybe he's still alive, you whisper as you hurry toward the desolate scene. Following a narrow path, you wind your way up toward an opening in the mountain. Pushing your way past the fallen rebel, you enter a deep cave and rush to the side of a small crumpled figure lying broken on the cold stone floor. Uncle Zed, you cry as you gently turn the figure's face toward you. No, whispers the man. Not Zed. Psychus. I was Zed's servant. What happened? Is that all right? Is he still alive? You ask urgently. Uh, brain damage? <laughs> is Uncle Z in... Is he Uncle... <laughs> Probably. They'd read it the same. Yes, he's alive, gasps the man as he gives a choking laugh. What's funny? Where's my uncle? I've come to bring him home. There's going to be a celebration and speeches and he'll be returned to his place of honor. 
What's happened to him? Tell me. A terrible grimace crosses the man's face, and his body shakes with silent laughter. So they've forgiven him, have they? Well, I'm afraid it's too late for that. Do they really think he would take his banishment like- Yeah, it's been a good 999 years. I don't think the dude wants to come back, right? <laughs> Why would he? He used all his magic skills to call upon the powers of darkness to aid him in his revenge. Revenge? What revenge? He's forgiven. You may have forgiven him, but he has not forgiven those who banished him. They will pay dearly for what they did to him, croaks Psychus. What does he plan? Inoki asks quietly. Shen, gasps Psychus. Shen? The Dragon of Doom? That cannot be possible, you say. Shen is only a myth invented to frighten children. Shen will frighten more than children before it is done, whispers Psychus. It's more than a story. It's real, and it's coming. Zed discovered the spell to call Shen forth. He promised I would be saved. I would have stood at his left hand. I would have been rewarded. But the spell was too strong. I wish I could live to see it. The end of the world. What a terrible guy. Can I kick him? Where's the option to kick this guy? Suddenly, Psychus is seized by a fit of coughing, and as he clutches at your arm, he whispers, You'll never catch him in time. You're too late. He's gone north to meet the dragon, and he told me the plan. In his dying breath, he told me the plan. And dies. That's one. That's one death. Gently, you lower the dead man to the ground. He must have been delirious. Uncle Zed would never do anything awful like that. <laughs> I know him personally. What was all that nonsense about the dragon of doom? You ask as you get to your feet. No nonsense, I'm afraid. Shen is the dragon of doom. Wherever and whenever he appears, people die. Not just a few, you understand, but lots and lots of people. Whole nations. And not just people. Animals, birds, reptiles, anything that walks, breathes, swims, or flies. If it's alive, it dies. I thought that was just a story. The council would like to keep it that way. Just a story. A passing dragon told me about Shen once. Shen used to ravage the earth every chance that came along. But finally, the council united all the kingdoms and killed all the evil wizards who knew the spell. Then they burned every copy of the spell they could find. They thought it was gone forever and Shen would sleep for eternity. It appears that your uncle has rediscovered the spell and called Shen back as an instrument of revenge. I still think this is all ridiculous, but I suppose we'd better do something. Like what? asks Inoki. Before deciding, turn to page 25. What? <laughs> okay. Well, I think we should go after Uncle Zed and bring him back, or we don't know where Zed's gone. But first, we have to go to page 25. What? I've never read one of these, so, okay. Oh, okay, we get a page of lore. As the great dragon flies, clouds boil black beneath it, and the land quakes and shudders. Mountain peaks that have stood since time began crumb- Oh, mountain peaks that have stood since time began crumble into adjoining valleys. Long dormant volcanoes spout geysers of lava and poison gas into the air, and terrible storms lash the land. The dragon ignores the damage, for Shen is the dragon of doom. It is only fitting that the land should weep at Shen's passing. But Shen notes the cold wind upon scales grown thin with age, and mourns the loss of his warm, dark cave. Who is this mortal who dares to summon me? Why could he not have left me alone? I do not disturb his sleep. Why does he disturb mine? What does he want of me? Wealth? Power? They are all that man ever wants. Forked lightning spews from the dragon's mouth and carves a deep trench in the earth, where nothing will grow for a hundred years. That's a quarter of a nap for this guy. Slowly. Slowly, the great dragon flies over the dark edge of the world into the light of day. As the sun caresses its body, Shen's anger lessens. The warmth touches old wounds and hurts and soothes them. It warms Shen's blood, and for a time, the dragon knows peace. Perhaps I shall listen to him who has summoned me. Perhaps I shall do his bidding and not eat him directly. I shall see. And the dragon of doom flies on. Go back to page 18 and make your decision. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here, we're gonna we're gonna manage a poll. Create a new poll. Okay. Should we This is gonna be decision one. Should we A 
go after Uncle Zed and bring him back. Then we'll see how wrong uh, Hinoki is about the dragon. So that's option one. We're going to go after Uncle Zed. Or option two, we don't know where Zed's gone. We might not find him until it's too late. We should go back to the council and let them decide what to do. So option two is let the council decide. And you can also um, expend extra channel points to um, to vote extra. So that's going to run for a minute. That's running right now. Go ahead, go ahead and vote on that. Can I vote on that? Hold on, I can. I think we should let the council decide because that's the smart thing to do. Okay, but but you guys think differently. Apparently, oh, it's split half and half. Uh, we're favoring we're favoring this child going out on his own to retrieve Uncle Zed. This is dangerous. Screw the council. Not the men, but the women and children too. Oh God, it's almost unanimous. It's almost unanimous. There's so many votes. Okay, well, we've got like 10 more seconds, but I don't think anybody's gonna, I don't think anybody's gonna bring that back the other direction. Okay, five, four, three, two, one. It's official, we're going after Uncle Zed. Oh, okay, Ikurna, you're the number one. You contributed three channel, 300 channel points. Okay, we're going to go to page 143. We are going so deep. 143. That's 143 right there. Why did it take me to page 20? Oh, it's loading. Okay. I'm tired, you say, as you rub your aching leg muscles. We haven't stopped to sleep or eat for more than two days now, ever since we started following this trail to the north. I'm not tired, says Anoki. Of course not. You've been riding on my shoulder ever since we left home. But I need to stop to eat and get a good night's sleep or I won't be able to go any farther. Then we can continue on after Uncle Zed. I could use something to eat too, says Anoki. Why don't I fly ahead and see what I can find? All right, you say as you sink to the floor of the forest. Come back and tell me something good. You rest your head against a large, shaggy tree. Shaggy? Why would a tree be shaggy? Moss, maybe? I guess moss. And watch as the small dragon flaps skyward. Soon, images of a distant treetop, of distant treetops and rolling countryside start to flash through your mind. You see a whitewashed building, thatched with fresh rushes and a sign blowing in the wind. That building looks like it might be an inn. Get a little closer to it so I can see what it is, you direct. I agree with... Hinoki's voice begins inside your head, and then his words break off, and you see the horizon flash by at incredible speed. The forest draws closer and closer, and then branches and leaves flash by in your mind, almost faster than you can see them. You close your eyes and throw your arms up in front of you, and throw in front of your face, even though you know that you are only seeing what Hinoki sees and cannot be harmed. Suddenly, there is a great snap, and the picture fades. Oh no. Zoinks. <laughs> Zoinks! Oh yeah, thank you, Nightbot. If you are, uh, if you are so inclined, we are doing Giving Day right now, so it'd be nice if you could give a donation. It goes towards the Solidus Scholarship, which makes it possible for people to come to OU and play esports in our uh, our whole big esports department. It's like three thousand people strong, and it's only growing. A lot of people put a lot of work into this, and it'd be nice if we could give out more and bigger scholarships. Anyway, how many times do I have to tell you not to do that to me? You shout as Hinoki drops onto your shoulder. If you're going to do that, break the mind link. You know I get sick. I'm sorry, Morgan, I forgot. And what would you have me do? Order a meal at the inn and eat it on a plate with silverware? Quarreling amic amicably, the two of you continue on toward the building you saw through Hinoki's eyes. Oh, I thought Hinoki just died. I thought he dropped dead. But he's fine. Maybe your luck's gonna change, you say as you look at the sign that shows a roasted duck and a mug of ale. Travelers welcome, reads the sign. I don't trust that at all. Not at all. The last rays of the setting sun light your way to the front door of the inn. The latch gives you way the latch gives way beneath your hand and you see a large whitewashed room. Heavy beams cross the low ceiling, and hanging from each beam are mugs of copper, pewter, and bronze. A hearty fire crackles on the hearth, and the aroma of roast lamb fills the air. 
May I help you, sir? Asks a small, nervous voice. Oh, there you are, you say, eyeing the haggard man who suddenly appears at your side. I'd like a good dinner, a bed for the... Excuse me. A bed for the night and some information. Dinner? Bed? Information? Repeats the innkeeper, wringing his hands nervously. What's the matter with this fellow? He's acting very strange, Inoki's voice says inside your head. I'm getting sticky old lady from the Spongebob movie vibes. Like the lady where they try to get ice cream and then she ropes them in. That's what I feel like is happening to us right now. Yes, you repeat. A bed for the night, dinner, and some information. I'm looking for my uncle. He's very, very old, and his name is Zed. Perhaps he stopped here. It's the only northbound road leading out of the mountains, and we know he came this way. Before the words are even out of your mouth, the innkeeper is shaking his head from side to side. No beds, he says. We're full up, and we've nothing to eat, not a crumb in the place. And I've never seen your uncle. He's never been here, I'm positive. You'll have to leave now, I was just closing. What are you talking about, you cry angrily. There's not a soul in the place that besides us. And I smell roast lamb. The, the lamb is their dinner. Respect that, Morgan. As for leaving, why, it's starting to rain. I'm cold, tired, and hungry, and I have no desire to sleep in some wet woods when I can stay here. Morgan's pushy. Morgan's a bit of a Karen. The innkeeper wrings his hands and twitches nervously. Suddenly, a smaller figure, no higher than his shoulder, appears in the doorway behind him. Although the figure's narrow face is covered with smudges of soot and hundreds of freckles, you decide that the creature is a girl. <laughs> That's so savage. Her head is covered with a tight mat of red gold curls that look as though they have been hacked at dull with a dull knife. Her clothes are a mismatched mess of patches and wrinkles. Only the brightest blue eyes you have ever seen save the girl from looking like a walking rag bag. <laughs> That's my new favorite insult, you walking rag bag. We'll stay here tonight, you say firmly, unseen by the innkeeper. The girl shakes her head from side to side. I'm sorry, sir, you should leave, insists the innkeeper. The girl nods in agreement, her eyes never leaving your face. The child seems to be trying to tell us something, says Hinoki's voice. Why don't we do what she says? Sleeping in the woods won't kill us. There's something odd going on around here. Okay, we reach our second choice. Okay. New poll. Where are we sleeping? So we can follow Hinoki's advice, and we can just sleep out in the forest, I guess. I, I, maybe it won't be very comfy, but we can insist on staying at the inn, which might be, uh, might not be great even that the guy seems kind of angry. While this poll runs, I'm going to uh, drink some water real quick. back okay why you guys are trying to get this poor guy killed he's a child how much water am i drinking i was also clearing my throat in my nose because i'm having uh it's it's spring it's allergy season i'm getting drainage okay well you said it was sketchy and then you insisted on staying there page 123 it is we're going backward also, I shouldn't, I, uh, I might not need to say this, but don't read the pages that are not, that we're not supposed to be reading. You'll get spoilers. Please load. This is what I need, please. No? The book broke. My book broke. Some really interesting content right here. Let me, um... 
Let me open this up in another tab, and I'll, um, we'll see if that one loads faster while we're waiting on this. Oh, there we are. Innkeeper, I will stay here tonight, and that's final. Now please bring me something to eat and drink. What a pushy kid! I'm assuming Morgan's a kid. Maybe not. What a pushy magic user. Uh, the, innkeeper, the innkeeper's face twitches, but he bows low and vanishes into the kitchen. As you settle yourself in front of the hearth, you notice the girl staring at you with her big blue eyes. You study the room to hide the fact that her gaze is making you very uncomfortable. Quick glances tell you that she is still standing in the doorway. Her incredible blue eyes fill with tears and shine with disappointment. You are extremely uncomfortable. Yeah, you made them uncomfortable too, Morgan. The girl is making you wonder whether or not you were right. You don't even know her, but somehow it matters. They're, okay, they are doing the DM... Are you sure about that? That's what they're doing right now. They're asking us again. Um, oh. Okay. New poll. Are you sure about that? Um, no. We're going to change our mind. Or, yes. We're going to be stubborn. We really should not... <laughs> You know this trick well? Oh god. I'm voting no, we're not gonna kill this kid! And his poor dragon? Okay, it's gotta be some kind of trap, like a witch or something. Right? Oh god, what if we end up with a tie? I didn't prepare for a tie. Oh, no. <laughs> we got more people voting yes. Okay, that's, that's nice. Good. Good. You should be glad that I'm I'm the streamer here, because if I were a viewer, I have 15,000 channel points, and I would be spamming them. Save them with magic? Oh, you're right, they must be under a curse or something. Okay. Well, it's looking... It's looking like we're gonna stay here in the inn with the girl who is staring at us and has been for like an hour. And the guy, the innkeeper who is... Yeah, you feel like we're gonna die? I agree. Let's find out by going to page 28 all the way back. That's 26. Okay. Closing your eyes, mind, and heart, especially heart, to the strange rag bag, you turn away and busy yourself taking off your backpack. Soon, the innkeeper returns with a heaped plate of roast lamb, baked new potato. What are new potatoes? What are old potatoes? and fresh asparagus. You wash it all down with a loaf of crusty bread and several mugs of hot cider. Okay, now I'm, I'm actually getting kind of hungry. That sounds nice. Hinoki allows you to feed him tidbits from your plate. The cider has an odd taste, and soon after you've finished your meal, you begin to grow drowsy. They drugged us! They put something in our drink! Please show me in my room, you say thickly as you struggle to your feet. Yes, sir, but the creature cannot go with you. It will have to sleep in the barn, the innkeeper says nervously. We don't allow animals in the rooms. Oh no, they don't allow Hinoki in the room. They're the little ones. Brand spank and... Oh, 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 like the little fingerling potatoes. I see. I don't think that's wise, Hinoki's voice mind links. Tell him no, he's up to no good. Okay, I'm gonna make this one shorter. Um, Because it's a pretty quick thing. So are we going to tell him, are we going to refuse, or are we going to accept his his rule here? Oh, I can't go shorter than a minute. So, a minute it is. We are the boss here. <laughs> Apparently, the way, the way that you guys have been playing Morgan, he doesn't take anything from anyone. The poor innkeeper and the poor little girl. You would, you, you'd think she would, like, say something, or the innkeeper might say no. Oh my god, it's unanimous on refuse. You know what, I'm gonna side with you guys this time. My one vote can't do much. They might be evil? They, they might be evil? Maybe? You're not sure? I don't know if you heard that, but some... Some girl just shrieked in my hallway. Did that come through the mic? 
It's like a horror movie scream. Not, not evil, to be honest. We'll find out. Okay, refuse it is. It did not good, okay, because it was obnoxious and it actually it hurt my ears. Okay, 87. I live on a... I live in a hallway with a bunch of frat girls that like to host parties in their dorm. So... It gets kind of loud occasionally. They, like, leave their doors open and run in and out. Quite bothersome. Okay. I'm sorry, but that's not possible. My pseudo-dragon, Hinoki, never leaves my side. Besides, you wouldn't want him to. He'd eat every animal in the place. That's not true, squawks Hinoki silently. How do you squawk something silently? Do you want to sleep in a barn? You link. Well, carry on, Morgan, but be careful. I sense mischief in this fellow. Mischief? I sense murder. Please show me to my room. It's been a long day, you say. Won't you have more cider, sir, to ease your slumbers? The innkeeper asks, oilily? Oilily? No more, hisses Inoki. Normally you like cider, but this brew has an odd flavor. Thanks, but I don't think I'll have any trouble sleeping. I'm very tired. Follow me, please, says the innkeeper as he leads you down a dark corridor. Aren't there any lights? You ask as you feel your way down the dark corridor. You don't get to make that complaint. When you're the person who has forced your way into this into this inn after they tried to turn you away, you don't get to complain about the lighting situation here. I try to save a few coins here and there by saving candles, but no matter, here's a room, just through the store. I'll bid you good night now and see you on the morrow. Your outstretched hands touch the outline of a door and you grope for the doorknob. Silently, it swings open before your hand. Danger! screams Hinoki. Instantly, you drop to the floor, expecting an attack of some sort, but nothing happens. What's... what's the matter? You question nervously. Something's wrong. Don't you feel that cold, damp breeze and smell that air? What am I holding on to there? It smells more like a dungeon than a bedroom. Cautiously, you reach out and your hand touches... nothing. As you explore more, you feel stone walls covered with slime. Suddenly, you hear footsteps. You roll onto your back, reach out in a wide sweep, and grab what feels like a leg? Swiftly, you jerk the leg, heaving the body toward the doorway. Try to murder me, will you? You snarl. You hear a thin whimper, and you realize that you're not holding on to the innkeeper, but something else. Instinctively, your hand tightens around the leg, and although there is a sickening thump as the body strikes the slimy wall of the floorless room, you do not release your grip. Slowly, you edge your way back from the yawning edge, dragging the unknown person with you. At last, both of you are firmly wedged against a far wall. Who are you? You ask roughly as you shake the small figure in your grasp. Speak up, I could have killed you just now. If I don't get the right answers, I may do so yet. Morgan is a... Morgan's like criminal. This guy has no chill at all. Sounds good to me, links Hinoki. It's me, Saffron, says a meek voice you recognize as the girl in the dining hall. Oh, <gasps> flashback, do you remember the first page? Our new friend, Saffron. So we made friends with this girl, apparently. I, I was checking to see if you were still alive and if I could help you. As you clutch the small, thin figure, it seems that you can feel her heart pounding through her tattered clothing. You knew he would try to kill me? Of course, that's why I tried to warn you, but you wouldn't listen. She did try to warn me. Unbidden, the picture of the girl shaking her head from side to side leaps into your mind. Why should he try to kill me? A man, a strange man, passed through yesterday. He frightened the customers away. After they left, he told my master that if anyone followed him or asked about him, my master was to prevent him from following. And if my master failed, the stranger would come back and kill him. My master did not believe him and tried to throw him out, but when he touched him, his hands blistered as though he had scalded them in fire. After that, my master was frightened and argued no more. He isn't a bad man, but he is a coward. So what did he lace my drink with? Poison or like... Like drugs to make me fall asleep so he could kill me in my sleep? And aren't you afraid? Yes, but I couldn't let him kill you, whispers the girl. We should leave before the innkeeper comes back, Inoki mind links. Wait. Wait, hold on. She says, I agree. How did she hear the mind link? I agree, says Saffron. We can go to my room. He'd never believe I'd defy him. You can hear our thoughts, you ask, surprised. 
I can hear everyone's thoughts, answers Saffron. Not just yours. But... Wait, she knows- she knows I called her a rag bag. She knows I called her a rag bag. She knows I insulted her appearance so hard. Oh my god, I just ruined this little girl's self-confidence. She's gonna try to kill me in my sleep because of what I thought about her. Not now, Morgan, urges Inoki. Let's get to safety, then we can talk. Holding Saffron's arm and tracing the wall with your hand, you proceed down the corridor to her tiny room next to the kitchen. As Saffron strikes flint to candle, you hear a hiss and see the glint of sharp white fangs, and suddenly an orange body flashes through the air. Instantly, the air is filled with shrill hissing and screeching sounds. Inoki's sharp claws puncture your leather shoulder pad and cut into your flesh. Then your face is raked by a spread of cold white pain. Grandoon, stop that! Bad boy, scolds Saffron as she pulls an enormous orange tomcat spitting and clawing from you. That's better than it could have been. Of all the orange things to attack me, it could be a lot worse. Pseudo dragon. Uh, pumpkin. Pumpkin pie. Bad boy, you exclaim as you try to calm your wildly flapping pseudo dragon. Am I calling Hinoki bad or am I calling the tomcat bad? Grandoon didn't mean anything by that. We frightened him. Please don't be angry with him. He's my only friend, pleads Saffron. If you name a cat Grundoon, you can't expect it to have manners. <laughs> it's called Grundoon. Of course it's going to try to scratch my face. Glaring at the huge cat, who glares back with malice, you tuck Hinoki under your arm protectively and settle onto the hard bed. Settle down, Grundoon. You will not eat him. Not now, not ever, Saffron links. You sit up startled. You know that others can mind link with pseudo dragons, but you've never heard of anyone mind linking with a cat. And how is it that you're able to hear her thoughts? It's quite simple. Oh, right, she hears everything. It's quite simple, Saffron says, noticing your puzzlement. I'm not a witch or anything, it's this medallion. She removes a small metal shaped like a cat with wings from around her neck. My father was a traveling tinker. He bought, sold, traded, and sometimes stole. <laughs> Oh, great. Nice. Tack that on the end. Could have been worse. Could have been Garfield. Oh, God. He wouldn't want to eat me, though. He'd be looking for lasagna. Also, it's not even a Monday. It's Thursday. He gave me this so I could help him with his schemes, like stealing horses and livestock. Where is he now, you ask? Dead. He was caught with six cows that weren't his, and they hanged him. I was given to the innkeeper to raise in exchange for work. Why do you stay? asks Hinoki. Because I have nowhere else to go. You look at the tiny medallion hanging at the end of the chain. Saffron, will you sell me your medallion? Hinoki and I are, in are on a dangerous mission, and your medallion just might make the difference between life and death. Your medallion just might make the difference. Oh, I couldn't, gasps, gasps Saffron as her hand closes protectively around the medallion. It's all I have left of my father. Saffron, why don't you come with us? Lings Hinoki. Seeing your startled reaction, the excited pseudo dragon goes on. Hush, Morgan. Let me finish. Saffron, this mission could well affect all mankind. If you don't help us, life might even be worse for you than it is now. Please say you'll come. I wouldn't go anywhere without Grundoon, says Saffron. I would. I'd like to go most places without Grundoon. That man eater, you whisper. Never. The three of you continue your discussion for hours. Grundoon sits on Saffron's lap, purring gently through his fangs and eyeing you with suspicion from time to time. At last you give in. Saffron and Grundoon will join you. Dawn sees you many miles from the inn, following Zed's trail. What do we do now? You ask as you stare bleakly at the road that divides at your feet. Which way did he go? You sit down at the base of a tree and link minds with Hinoki. But although you strain your abilities to the utmost, you are unable to find your uncle on either path. You try, Saffron, you urge, ignoring Grundoon, who frolics happily on the grass. Holding her medallion to her forehead, Saffron closes her eyes and concentrates. Nothing, she says at last. I get nothing. Well then, we must make a good guess, says Inoki. Where do these roads lead, Saffron? Excuse me. The one on the left goes into the Forlorn Mountains. We're looking for the Bald Mountain, actually. Wait, no, we went to the Bald Mountain. 
it was it was bald. It was good, as we expected. But now we're looking for a different place. Okay. The road on the right goes into the Great Swamp. Both are filled with danger and many roaming monsters. All we can do is pick one. Okay. We're going to make a poll here. Swamp or mountain. Option one, the Forlorn Mountains. Which, uh, I have no clue what's in there. Option two is the Great Swamp. I would like to remind you. The very first page of this book. Or 94, okay. The very first page of this book. In the Great Swamp, there is a mini-headed Hydra. There's a mini... A mini-headed Hydra. It has many heads. It's not just a Hydra. It's a Hydra with many heads. And tiny cold eyes. So if you want to go to the Great Swamp, sure. But yeah, Saffron's gonna die. I guarantee it. We're probably gonna die. Um. Oh wait, I'm on the wrong page. Where was I? Oh crap, where was I? There we are, there we are. Snake says always go left. Oh my god. You wish you could change your vote. You can use uh, channel points to do more votes. If you follow, you get 300. Speaking of follow, you should uh, click through, if you're having fun, click through the the tag in the title of the stream and follow my personal channel as well as this channel. I stream here every Tuesday, 5 to 7, but I also stream on my own channel occasionally and over the summer, that's where I'll be doing my uh, my routine schedule, playing uh, Yakuza, Yakuza 0, Pikmin 4 once it comes out. I've got a whole bunch of stuff lined up. Okay, the... The results are in. Great Swamp. You guys want to kill the kids. Was that a shameless? I, all of my plugs are shameless. You don't, you don't get anywhere without plugging. Okay. Well, anyway, we decided, we decided we want the kids to die. So we're going to go to page 133. I'm telling you the cat is the first one to go. Grundune is going to be Grundun. Okay. Um, murky brown water, sucking mud, and tall reeds filled with clouds of whining mosquitoes stretch away into the vast distances of the Great Swamp. We'll never find our way through this mess, you exclaim angrily. Morgan is such a whiny, whiny child. Or adult, it's unclear. But Morgan is so whiny. I have no sympathy for Morgan. Hinoki's cool. Uh... Saffron's cool. If Morgan does like a heroic sacrificial death at the end, I will be fine with it. Of course we will. I used to come here every day gathering lotus bulbs, says Saffron as she strides confidently into the swamp. Don't worry, I know the way. You hack at tall weeds with your staff. Somehow it doesn't seem right that you, a graduate magic user, and almost an adult, there we go, that's the clarification, should be led by a little girl and her man-eating cat. It's... It's downright embarrassing. Morgan, Hinoki links gently. The wise person accepts help when he needs it from wherever it's offered. Also, she can hear me, right? And I'm not a little girl. Yeah, she can. Saffron declares indignantly. If you think you're so wonderful, Mr. Almost Grown Up Magic User, you can guide us yourself. Can't I think anything without the two of you jumping all over me? The next thing I know, Grundoon will be telling me what to do. And what's so hard about guiding? I'll bet I can do it just fine. And pushing your way to the front, you set off in a new direction. Absolutely a child. We've done zero magic, you're right! Isn't there a magic spell to, to put you on the right direction? No? Can we cast... Fly? Can we cast Teleport to the right place, please? All day long, you trudge from one mound of mud to the next until you're forced to admit that you are hopelessly lost. Find path, exactly. Maybe that didn't exist in uh, AD&D. What do I do now? You groan inwardly as you sink wearily down on a tuft of sink wearily down on a tuft of grass. Find uncle. Find greater uncle. Um you could come and rescue me, whispers an unknown voice inside your head. <laughs> oh no, not another one! You moan, holding your aching head. It's coming from over there, off to the right, says Hinoki, as he spreads his wings and flaps upwards. Morgan, come quickly, he urges. Pulling yourself up, you slog uh, through the scummy water toward Hinoki's voice with saffron splashing alongside you. As you part a, a, 
garden of marsh grass, you see an amazing sight. There, sprawled in the mud, is a great feathered serpent, a kuwaddle. A kuwaddle. Is how I'll say that one. Although you've heard of them, you've never seen one before. You know they are extremely powerful, both in magic and in strength. It is hard to imagine one being hurt, yet here one lies before you, sprawled helplessly in the mud. Okay. We got a cast... Uh, heal. Do we have healing magic? Are we that kind of wizard? Sorry, that kind of magic user? Slipping to the Kawadal's side, Saffron places a slender arm under its body and cradles its head in her lap. Stroking the dull scales, she asks, Can you tell us what happened? It was done by a magic user. One whose soul and mind are black and bent, groans the Kawadal. I was patrolling the swamp. It is part of the territory I protect when I felt his thoughts. I challenged him and asked him his purpose and his destination, as is my right. Instead of answering, he attacked me mentally. I was stunned, the Kawadal goes on, but I have protected myself. Oh, but I protected myself, and then we fought. I've never met anyone whose strength equaled mine. Indeed, he was stronger. At last, he laughed and left me for dead, knowing I was too weak to call for help or fly away. Never in my lifetime have I encountered such strength. Or felt such evil. You must help me. I must prevent this evil magic user from carrying out his plans. He means to destroy the world. If you want to help the Kawadal, turn to page 114. Uh, 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 manage pull, okay. Or if we're... <laughs> I'm not sure I can help. We, we can just push on. That's option two. Kawadal. Okay. So we can help it, or we can leave it for dead, like an, like a monster. Cleric, fighting man, and magic user were the only classes? Those are your three options? Those are rough options. Okay, while we, um, evil run? No! <laughs> while that poll goes, I'm going to run a quick one minute ad break so that new viewers clicking onto the channel don't get pre-roll ads. I think. I think it will run a one minute ad break. Okay. Yeah, that just that disables pre rolls for 21 minutes. I think that that should be working. Okay, good. I'm getting I'm getting ads too. Anybody who subscribed will be able to hear me right now. This is exclusive audio. This is exclusive audio for for the subs. Okay, it's 50... F oh. <laughs> we have an interesting conundrum in our hands. <laughs> okay. Um, so something interesting happened, if you'll look. We're 50-50 split on whether we want to leave it or if we want to help it. So we're going to have to flip a coin. I think that's what we're gonna do. Someone call heads. Heads is heads gonna be helper. Is heads gonna be leave it for dead? Okay, let's get a, uh, a tab going. Or hold on, let me get the coin flip up. You forgot to vote. Well, it's too late now. Okay, heads. We leave it for dead. Okay, tails. We're helping it. We're saving it. We're doing everything we can to save it. Murder hobos. You failed this time. Lady Luck was on my side. <laughs> Damn. Maybe it'll be an ally. Maybe we'll get help from it. Okay, 114. We're gonna do something good for once. Because so far we're good for nothing. Oh wow, it's big. We'll help, you say. Saffron, give me your hands. This is what we'll do. Minutes later, you're ready. You sit in the mud next to Saffron, with the Kawadal lying across both your laps. Its once silver scales are now a dull gray. Its eyes are closed, and its breathing seems ragged. Somewhat nervously, Hinoki steps off your shoulder and stands on the Kawadal's back. You and Saffron form a circle around Hinoki, with your hands resting on the Kawadal. Then you place your foreheads against Hinoki's head. Saffron, think of blue skies and soft floating clouds. 
It's very warm and you feel very good, you say softly. You are filled with thoughts of power. You can do anything you set your mind to. Now our friend, the coital scales are growing warm beneath our touch, beneath our love. Our thoughts are going into its body and carrying our love. The coital is healing now. Our carrying is flowing through its body, healing all the pain. This feels like a prayer. Imagine if every time in combat, your cleric is casting, like, emergency cure wounds on you, like fifth level cure wounds, and then they have to give a, a minute long prayer before you can get healed. You never flipped a coin? I did it on stream! I did it on stream! I'm gonna betray you? Kill you? You think so? I don't think so. You wish! Why do you wish? Why do you wish? Okay. Um, you concentrate as you've never concentrated before. You feel your mind flow through the Quaddle's body. You're used to Hinoki's mind blending with yours, but the added presence of Saffron gives you just gives you power that you've never had before. Just to make sure of success, you return mentally to the Quaddle's head and think your way through its body a second time, willing it to become healthy. <laughs> Excuse me. God, okay, I need to drink water. My tongue is numb. Also gonna switch up the song. I forgot that I've had the same song going for this entire time. This one's more fitting. As we hit the hour mark, I wanna remind you, it's OU Giving Day. The QR code on the side of the screen right there will let you donate. And it'll go towards our scholarships for e, uh, OU Esports students. Okay, back to the book. As you open your eyes, the kobattle stirs. Looking down, you see that its scales now shine brightly. <laughs> we had to wait a second. And its feathers are like a shimmering rainbow. Its eyes sparkle with health, and it's as... And as its tongue flicks in and out, it is almost seems to smile. You've restored my strength. I am forever in your debt. Tell me what I can do for you, and if I have the power, it is yours. We're searching for the same man who attacked you, you say. He's my uncle. The quaddle scans you intently. You're very different from your uncle, it says at last. I've never met him, you admit. But once, he was a great and good magic user. <laughs> Magic user. That term just invokes power. We're trying to find him and bring him back to the Council of Nine. There is no good left in him, says the Kowaddle. I can tell you his destination, however. He's going to World's End. It is there that he plans his revenge upon the world. World's End? World's End is a, an area in a game. What game am I thinking of? World's End. I'm looking it up and I don't see. No, I got no clue. Zodania place, so oh, of course. Um, World's End, you say? What's that? It's thought to be the end of the world, answers the Quaddle. A strange place indeed. I do not venture there often. It is full of volcanoes and swirling mist. The sun never shines and monsters roam freely. It's not a place for lawful folks to be. Only chaotic and neutral folks. Still, that's where we must go. I will seek help, says the Quaddle. I do not think you should go there. But if you must, I will bring help and follow as soon as possible. We made an ally! We made a good decision for once. We made the right decision. No way. And it was only because of the coin flip. Okay, page 53. What? Huh? Oh, okay, 53. Don't read 52. Don't read 52. It says the end at the end of it. Don't read that one. The rest of the days pass without incident, and evening finds you deep within the heart of the swamp. There's so many S's. My lisp is coming through. I think we should stop here for the evening, you say. And though your muscles ache, you gather dry twigs and grasses and build a fire. Grateful for its warmth, you sink down on a moss-covered log. The log settles under your weight, and you sit wearily with your head in your hands. 
You're reading 52? No! Beneath you, you feel the log move again. Just as you are beginning to wonder why, you notice that there is a long, snaky vine wrapped around your ankle. As you reach down to take it off, another vine slithers out of the ooze and wraps itself firmly around your other leg. Great, now I'm being attacked by vines! Good one-liner, Morgan, good one-liner, you say with a sigh. As you try to untangle it, you slip your hand under the vine, and suddenly it tightens. You find it impossible to withdraw your hand. You feel terribly silly, sitting all bent over, wrapped in vines. As you sit tugging at your hand, trying to figure out what to do, something soft but heavy clouts you on the head, and the world spins before your eyes. Where's my party? Where's everyone else? Where is everyone? They're not even described in the scene. Help! You cry. Silly or not, you need someone to come to your aid. It's a shambler, shrieks Saffron as she rushes in, carrying a load of firewood. Do something, Morgan. I'm the one tied up. Really, silly? What do you mean, do something? A vegetable is trying to eat me. <laughs> and you say, do something? You do something. <laughs> a vegetable is trying to eat me. Oh, how they turn tables. Shambling mounds aren't vegetables, Saffron sniffs as she whacks the log with a stout stick. They only look like logs, but they're alive and they can think and they can kill you. That doesn't look like a log at all. Don't give me a lecture, just help me. Ouch, watch out, you just hit me. <laughs> she missed. Jer <laughs> Jeremy? Jeremy? Oh, right, okay. In jokes, I see. I'll kill it with my knife, says Saffron, as she draws a glistening blade. Turn to 129. Okay. Given the fact that she just hit me with a stick, I think she will end up stabbing me. But also, we get three options this time, which might be a first. I don't remember. Mound. Oh, no. Okay. Saffron. Shanks it. Or fire. Try to burn it up, Shatsunoki. Fire. Or wait, let me try a charm plant spell, you cry. Actually using magic for once. Oh, I, I can't type. That's too many characters. Just pretend like I said once at the end of that option. Three is magic. Three is magic. You're right. Magics. Good book series. Using this as a water break, by the way. Okay, we're all we're all unanimous. Okay. Yeah, it's coming to a close, and nobody has voted anything else. Good, 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 good. I'm glad to see that we're not, uh, dihydrate. I'd rather not dihydrate. There is a redeem for that, though. Um. It's not for me. It's, like, specific to specific other streamers on this channel for some reason, so... You could redeem make Ajax hydrate, and then I guess I would have to drink even though I'm not him. The fire one is obviously a bad choice, but it's surely funny. I mean, it would be, it, it would maybe work, but it might also just put the fire out. Or burn me. The monster looks like a melting stone man. Yeah, even the carrot melted on its face. Okay, we're gonna try Charming Plant. 124. Hmm? Move. Okay. Closing your eyes tightly to the horror that enfolds you, you picture the words of the spell in your old textbook. Concentrating on the words, you speak them aloud. Instantly, you feel he don't... Okay, apparently I can't drink water. Because now I'm burping. Um, instantly you feel Hinoki's familiar mental nudge and Saffron's soft touch as their minds lend you strength. The spell bursts from your mind and seems to explode around you. Slowly, the vines unwind, and you roll free and fall upon the ground, gasping for breath. Go away, mound, and never come back, you whisper hoarsely. Without a sound, the heap of rotting vegetation lumbers into the swamp and disappears. Okay, so it failed the wisdom save. Good job, team. 
We made our right decision. Let's go. Are you all right, Morgan? Asks Hinoki as he perches on your chest and peers into your face. I, I was quite concerned. No more than I was, I'm sure, old friend. You say as you sit up slowly. Morgan talks like a... Sometimes he talks like a 13-year-old, and sometimes he talks like a 40-year-old. Enoki? <laughs> uh, for reference, Enoki is a restaurant. <laughs> a local restaurant. Mound with minus two. Are you... Hold on. Are you looking at the stat block? Are you metagaming right now, Noah? <laughs> um, okay, so we're going to go to... Page 58, as there is no more danger in this, in our little area. You're, oh, you guessed. Well, let's find out. Let's find out. Gambling Mound, Stat Block, AD&D. We're going to go all the way back. Okay, here we are. Um, I, intelligence low? Hold on, did I not have stats? <laughs> Do they not have stats in, in, in AD and D? I don't think it has a wisdom. It's so it's so dumb it doesn't even have wisdom. It has low intelligence. Um Is Is Charm Plants an actual spell though? Charm plants oh and in 5e it's charm plants and animals. Guess you were close, I guess so. Is that piano? Is the piano coming through my mic? Uh, on In Dunham, on the second floor, you can hear the piano in the lobby because it's, like, open to the air. So every once in a while, somebody decides to play piano at, like, 8 or 10 or midnight. <laughs> and just wake everybody up, I guess. I don't know. Um, anyway... 58. Keeping a sharp eye out for shambling mounds or any other monsters, you get an early start and soon find yourself winding deeper and deeper into the gloomy swamp, now covered by a thick layer of mist. Grundoon! No, Grundoon, come back! screams Saffron suddenly. You see an orange blur, and the cat leaps onto a mud bank and disappears in a swirl of mist. Good riddance! Please, please help me catch him! sobs Saffron. How? I can barely see my hand in front of my face in this fog. Besides, I don't think he wants to be caught. He jumped of his own accord. Let him stay here. Morgan is savage. Little girl lost her cat. <laughs> no, Garfield. Put the piano on the mic. I'd have to... That would be kind of difficult. Please don't leave him. I've had him since he was just a little kitten, and he... He means a lot to me, begs Saffron. All right, all right, you sigh. I'm an asshole. Morgan is an asshole. I know I'll regret this, but I'll do it. Slogging through the misty gloom, you call, Here, kitty, 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 here, Grundoon. Good, good to know that's a 40-year-old tradition. Meow. <laughs> meow. Meow. Clip it. Clip it. He's over there off to the left, you call, changing direction. Oh, no. That's an intense one. <laughs> Let me back up from the mic. Meow. Okay. You read ahead. Why did you read ahead? Grundoon, hurry, Morgan. Something's happened, cries Saffron. Blasted cat. Serves it right if something's if something ate it. You mutter as you trudge through the knee-high water. Here, kitty, kitty, kitty. The last line on fifty-nine. Okay, I'll avoid that. There you are, you little cannibal. Why are you all fluffed up? It doesn't count as cannibalism if I'm a human and the cat's a cat, right? Hunter has me out on stream. I'm not gonna hurt you, you say. As you slide your hand under Grundoon's stomach, the cat gives a wild shriek, raises up your arm, and tries to burrow under Hinoki. Now you've done it. Look, I'm bleeding, you say as you hold up your scratched hand. Suddenly something moves. Perhaps it was the mist, or maybe your eyes are playing tricks on you, but it seems that you saw something. Something big. Ooh, ooh. Oh no, why did I read that aloud? Why did I read that out loud? Oh no. <laughs> you got me. You got me. I read it. Clip it. No. 
<laughs> no. No. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> perhaps it was the mist. Or perhaps your eyes are playing tricks on you. But it seemed that you saw something. Something big. It was no trick. I saw it too, thinks Link Sanoki. Try moving away quietly. Maybe it hasn't seen us yet. Whatever it is. Morgan! Grundoon! calls Saffron. Oh, there you are, Morgan. Have you found him? Saffron asks breathlessly. Oh, you have. Grundoon, you're so bad. And reaching over, she draws the cat toward her, ignoring its angry squalls and wildly flailing claws. Clutching your scratched neck, you open your mouth to speak, but your mouth remains open and you say nothing. Morgan, why are you staring like that? You really look quite silly. I already looked silly today. But you do not answer. All you can do is stare upward at an enormous reptilian head staring down at you through the mist. Then, even as you notice the tiny cold eyes, the tiny cold eyes and the mouthful of sharp teeth gaping toward you, you see yet another head. And another. And another. Morgan! It's a Hydra! Link Sanoki excitedly. What a silly Hydra! Oh no, oh no. What are you two talking about? Asks Saffron as she struggles with the panic-stricken cat. Oh! She gasps as she looks up. I see! Gathering your courage, you make your decision and say... Alright, this is our biggest pull yet. Okay. Hydra! Silly Hydra, even. Okay. One. Maybe I can fight it! If this is what you decide, turn to page 140. Maybe it hasn't seen, it, seen us yet and we can run away! If this is your decision, turn to page 77. The prophecy foretold this. On the first page, the prophecy foretold. Maybe I can use Zed's Ring of Wishes. Okay. Ring of Wishes. Maybe I can trick it. Trick! Oh god, the silly, goofy Hydra. Okay, this is an important one. <laughs> play nice with our poor children. Please play nice with them. I don't even know what I'm gonna vote. I could... I don't know where I want to put my vote. I think I'm gonna leave it to you guys. I know, I'll, I know where I'll put my vote. We're gonna, I'm gonna put my vote and fight it. Let's fight the Hydra. Wish the Beholder away. Yeah. If only. I don't know if the Ring of Wishes is gonna work like that. We should save it for Zed though, right? Like, we don't want to wish too soon. Because surely Zed is more dangerous than a, a Hydra. Whenever I talk, does the piano come through? Like, whenever I'm, whenever I'm speaking and it gives the mic room to listen in, does the piano come through in the background? Wish to teleport us away. Leave the girl. Leave Garfield. Let him die. No? Okay, perfect. Alright, it's in. It's official. Ring of Wishes. So we're gonna turn to page 97. We might die. Okay, pre-roll ads are back on. Should I, should I run an ad break? Should I run suspense? I'm not going to. Okay, 97. I'm gonna use Zed's Ring of Wishes, you say as you open the thong that binds the thong? <laughs> the thong that binds the small bag given you by the council. No, Morgan, it's too dangerous. It's too powerful to you, for you to use, and we don't know what will happen. It could kill you, Argo Zinoki. Those Hydra heads aren't exactly thinking of my health, you say, as you place the ring on your finger. It slides on loosely, yet even as you look at it, Wondering how to use it, it begins to shrink until it fits your finger perfectly. Oh! That's a magic item in the rules as written. Magic items will, like, fit to your body. And it's cool to see that that's been a thing since, uh, since AD&D. Since 1983. Touching the ring with the fingers of your right hand, you point the ring at the Hydra and shout, I wish you would disappear forever! One moment, you're looking straight into the cold, staring eyes of the fearsome monster. The next instant, the Hydra is gone. Completely vanished. Morgan, you idiot! It's obviously just turned invisible, right? It's obviously just turned invisible forever and we made it. We made an invisible Hydra. 
Right? That's what happened. I guarantee you. Okay. Where did it go, Morgan? Whispers Saffron, peering out from behind you. I don't know and I don't care, as long as it stays gone. Thank goodness the ring worked and nothing terrible happened to any of us, says Hinoki. That's how you would rule it? Yeah, not very, not clear enough in the wish at all. One can never be with, ne one can never be sure with such a powerful item. However, you should think about one thing. Some rings of this sort are only good for three wishes. You just used one of them. We don't know if there are any wishes left. We should get in trouble in the future. We won't be able to count on the ring. That's true. We really don't know how many are left. The future is still the future, you say as you take the ring off and place it back in the little little sack. Okay, the punishment is that we use the wish, which is almost worse. I'm just glad we're alive and still have a future to consider. Come on, let's get going before that Hydra's big brother comes looking for it. Please turn to page 32. I'm weary. Oh, 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 okay. We're back to Shen. I'm weary, the mighty Shen thinks, as it forces its great wings to lift for yet another beat. I'm tired of man and his petty battles. His greed for gems and other treasures is not for the beauty they contain, but for his own selfish interests. Man knows nothing of the secrets contained in the heart of a ruby, the mind of an emerald, or the eye of a sapphire. He is too busy killing and destroying. Perhaps man has been a mistake. Maybe it is best that he disappear from the face of the earth once and for all. Then dragons and other creatures of beauty may live in peace. I will answer the summons. Perhaps I am wrong. Perhaps man is not all bad. I will decide what must be done when I get there. Zed is pretty bad in terms of man. So I'm not optimistic. Dragon of Doom might kill everyone, actually. Says the dragon of doom, right? This guy's no much, not much better. And the great dragon flies on, though its wings ache with the effort and its longs for its beautiful warm cave. Far below, the clouds boil and spew hot rain that weeps upon the cowering earth. Soon, trees and grasslands give way to empty lands where there's nothing but rocks. The air grows hot, and far below, the dragon sees a sea of lava laughing at the land. Ah, uh, the end of the world, sighs the dragon and it begins to descend. You think the Dragon of Doom ever, like, gets bored, so it does, um, like a, like a, uh, like a, a plane in the sky does, where it draws, except it, like, makes a loop-de-loop -loop and then a big U-shape on top of it so that the cloud of death that falls below it makes, like, a dick shape. I feel like if I were a Dragon of Doom with the power to kill all life below me, I would do that at least a few times. Like, you wake up from a 400-year nap, you don't have anything better to do. Page 35. Seems as if you've been walking forever. The swamp is now far behind you, and a thick mist wraps itself around you. From time to time, you feel the ground rumble beneath you. Jets of hot gas fill the air with the stench of hot metal. I don't like the looks of this, Saffron says, trembling. Neither do I, but we have to go on. I'm sure Zed's not far from here. Okay, so we're not in the swamp anymore. Hold on, does that mean new music? I don't know what music to use. Hold on. Go with this one. I can't even hear it. No, we're not in a dungeon yet. Hold on. Battle, Requiem, Desert Temple. There we go. I got a website I need to send you later, by the way. Um, sorry if I doodle. It's got so many cool free songs to use. That's what I've been using for this whole stream. Okay. Hinoki, let's try scanning and see if we can find him. Saffron can help us and we'll be able to see even better. How do you do this scanning? Asks Saffron, moving to your side. It's similar to what we did when we healed the Kawadal. Just fix your thoughts on Hinoki and you can see whatever he sees. You both sit down on a rock outcrop and look at the pseudo-dragon. Now cast your mind into his. Become one with him. Gently, like remembering a favorite daydream, you slip into Hinoki's mind. Suddenly you're viewing yourself sitting on the rock through Hinoki's eyes. 
It feels weird, sort of like I'm sleeping or dreaming, Saffron says. Spreading his wings, Hinoki flaps up into the mist and you see our body grow small. I'm getting dizzy, gulps Saffron. It does that to me too, try not to think about it. It's okay unless he dies suddenly. Will you look at that? Below your view the mists swirl. As though directed by a million currents. What's that? What's that in the picture? Oh no. Hi. It doesn't have any pupils. Plumes of steam burst from the ground. Here and there, geysers of molten rock spew into the air. I don't see how we'll find anybody here, Link's Hinoki. An army could hide in those mists and we wouldn't see them. Saffron, let's try listening for Zed. Maybe we can hear his thoughts even if we can't see him. With three of us, we ought to have a pretty good range. It's, un it's okay unless if you die suddenly. That's not what, that's not what he said, but it would also be true if he did say that. As the frightening landscape slides beneath you, you search off to Hinoki's left and feel nothing. You repeat the process straight ahead, again without success. Finally, as you focus to Hinoki's right, a dry, cracked voice slides into your mind. Concentrating deeply, you find you can make out snatches of words. Should be here soon. No, he'll grant my wish. Cannot refuse me. All the treasure in the world. All my enemies dead. The hour approaches. Revenge will be mine. I'll teach him to. Hey, who's there? Abruptly, the voice disappears as though it might, as though it, as though it never existed. That's exactly what it says. You want to check? Do you want to check? I'll show you. I'll prove. Unless he. Oh, you're right. It does say dies suddenly. Weird writing. Uh, get down, you yell, and Hinoki drops like a stone as a blue bolt of energy sizzles through the air and explodes above him. What was that? gasps Saffron. A mind missile, a really high-level spell that magic users can use against anyone who tries to probe their minds. Is that real? Is that, is that canon? Mind missile. D&D. &D. Nope. It's not real. They made it up. It's not lore accurate. Okay. Uh, I was afraid he'd do that. Well, now we know he's here. Unfortunately, he knows we are here too, and from what he said, there isn't too much time. All day long, you push on through the frightening landscape. The smoke and heat and fiery explosions seem to be getting worse. The ground continues to shake almost without pause. We're in Goron territory, I think. Close enough to magic missile. It, it was, it's weird though. Like you, it didn't say magic missile. Like I thought that at first too, like maybe we were close, but it said mind missile. Um, stop, commands Inoki. There's nothing in front of us but air. Dropping to your knees, you place your hands on the hot ground and slowly crawl forward, peering into the billowing black smoke. Do you see anything, Morgan? Saffron asks. Before you can answer, the ground gives way abruptly beneath your probing fingers and you fall flat on your face. Both start with M's. Okay, but so do a lot of other things, right? What are other M spells? Um, magic mouth. Mm, message. Completely unrelated. Misty step. Good, good. This is like a D&D pop quiz. Mend. Mending, I guess. Mmm... There's probably more. I'm not going to crawl through the wiki and look for all the end spells, but if you want to, go ahead. I already said magic mouth. You actually get a negative point because you said something that was already said. Maximilian's earth and grass. Well, of course, all of the Maximilian spells. No. Yeah. Minus a point. Uh, before you can answer, the ground gives away. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Before you lie in an immense hole in the earth, deeper and wider than you can guess, it stretches off into the distance. Directly beneath you, you spot a narrow ledge that leads down into into the depths. Depths. Far, far below, you see an orange glow. Through narrowed eyes, you are able to make out a narrow path leading through the burning landscape toward what appears to be a flat-topped rock rising out of the pit. Crawling back from the edge of the pit, you report what you've seen. Do you think that's where Zed is headed? Asks Saffron with a shiver. I'm sure of it. As much as I'd like to believe otherwise, in my heart, I know that's where he's going. We'll be right behind him. What's your plan, Morgan? 
thinks Sinoki. I, I think we should leave, says Saffron. I don't want any part of this. It's too late. What are you gonna- are you gonna go back through the swamp alone? Because I'm not going back. We already spent too much time. I have a mission, Saffron. I can't stop now and neither can you. You'd never find your way out of here alone. And besides, unless we stop Zed, there might not even be a world left for you to return to. You don't know that for sure, Saffron says fearfully. No, I don't, you answer. But I have a pretty good idea. And so do you. Saffron, Link Sinoki. Zed is much more powerful than we are. Alone, we have little or no chance of success. The only people who are strong enough to stop him are far from here. Oh, yeah, okay, hold on. I almost forgot to loop the song that I remembered last minute. Okay, um, I can't promise we'll live through it, but we must try, and you must help us. But I'm frightened, whispers Saffron. Besides, the world has never done anything good for me. You can't blame the world for the misfortunes that life has dealt you, Link Sinoki. It owes you nothing. You've been given the precious gift of life, and that is all anyone can ask. It's up to you what you make of your life. Don't waste it blaming others for your problems. If you want something, you must make it happen yourself. You can count on no one but yourself in the long run. Damn, Hinoki. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. Level 1. Magic user spells. Affect normal fires. Alarm. Armor. Burning hands. Charm person. Uh, comprehend languages. Dancing lights. Detect magic and larger race. Feather fall. Find familiar fire water. Fire water? Friends. Grease. Hold portal. Identify jump light. Magic missile. Melt. Melt. That's for whenever you're cooking and you want like the the cheese stretch that they do in the movies or like in the commercials. Mending message mount Nistal's magic aura precipitation protection from evil push read magic push run shield shocking grasp sleep spider climb taunt tense with floating disc unseen servant ventriloquism wizard mark wizard mark right best grilled cheese. I'm actually surprised at how many of those are still in 5e. Like, at least half of those are still in 5e. And I think a lot of them are still one, are still level 1 spells. That's crazy, actually. That's really cool. Anyway. Um, if that's true, why should I help you? She asks. Or asks Saffron, confused. Because some things are more important than self. This is one of them. Alright, Freud. And also because we're your, your friends. And, we, and also because we're your friends and we need you, you add. I'll come, Saffron says, looking ashamed. I have nothing to go back to. You're my only friends besides Grundoon. What do you want me to do? I don't have much experience with the center of the world stuff. Neither do I. We'll just have to take it a step at a time, you answer. You'd better put that cat of yours in your backpack or he'll just be in the way. I agree. We should have left Garfield behind. Carefully, you scout the edge of the inferno. Taking a deep breath, you lead the way down the trail that snakes its way down the inside face of the cauldron in a snarl of sharp rocks. You see Saffron tremble as she clings to the rough rock. Your stomach heaves as you look down at the boiling mass below you, and words of comfort die on your lips. I'll skin ahead so you know what to expect, Link Sinoki. With a rush of wings, he's gone. Fearfully, you enter his mind and watch as the path unfolds before his eyes. Hot currents buffet the small dragon, flinging him up and down and threatening to crush him against the wall. Slowly, you progress clutching Saffron's hand as though it were a lifeline. Foot by dangerous foot, fruit by dangerous fruit, you inch your way down the treacherous trail. As you descend, the heat steadily grows more intense. Finally, you are able to see the floor of the inferno all too clearly. Fear fills you as you realize that the red globe is molten lava, seething restless, bleh, restlessly under a thin crust. As you watch... Also, why did that make me want pizza? <laughs> the thin crust, I think? The molten red. I'm kind of hungry for the pizza and the uh, the lamb chops. The lasagna. At long last, you reach the bottom of the trail. From close up, the vast sea of molten lava is even more terrifying than it was at a distance. Hissing and steaming constantly, it flings itself against the cliff like waves upon the shore. Your destination, the rock island you saw from above, is lost from sight in the rising steam of the inferno. Where do we go from here? Saffron asks in a small voice. I see rocks over to the left, Link Sinoki, and I see what could be a trail leading to the island. 
It looks dangerous, but I think you can do it. Through his eyes, you see the rocks, narrow and drenched with lava spray, stretching off into the distance. Order dorm pizza? I could, actually. There's like a discount you get at Papa John's um, that goes all year long for, for college students. It is expensive, though, and also not worth it, and also I've already had so much junk food today. I want to, but I'm not gonna. Clutching her hand in yours, you make your way down the final stretch. Oh, romance blooming. Wait, no. <laughs> I, called her a, I called her a ragbag. <laughs> I don't think there's any romance happening there. Despite the intense heat, you take your cloak out of your pack and put it on. Put yours on too, Saffron. If the spray hits you, the cloak might protect you. Cloth. Known for protecting against lava. Cloth. The discount sounds great, and it still costs like 15 bucks for a small- Yeah, it's so expensive! I've only used it once. But Papa John's is just so good, it's the best pizza. Well, okay. I- I'm a CeCe's enjoyer. I think CeCe's is the best. But Papa John's is the best at delivery. Not sponsored, by the way. You- You ragbag. <laughs> Endearingly ragbag. Ragbag with Riz. See, Domino's is cardboard. I Since you forced me to have it that one session, it's actually not that bad. But yes, yeah, CeCe's is good. CeCe's is good. Maybe the one in my hometown is just better. But CeCe's rocks. CeCe's is good. And the, the spinach pizza at CeCe's is so, so peak. Let me make sure really quick that nobody's DMing me. No, okay, we're good. Friendship with Hunter ended. That's okay. I have I have CCs. I'll go eat CCs as my comfort food. You're thinking of oh, little no, Little Caesars is terrible. I hate Little Caesars. I've always hated Little Caesars, and I do so with passion. If Domino's is cardboard, Little Caesars is wet cardboard. And it's like they have it at everything because it's so cheap, so they always get Little Caesars and it's like eating paper. Both start- no, actually Little Caesars starts with an L. Thank you. At long last, you reach the bottom of the trail. From close up, the vast sea of molten lava is even more terrifying than it was at a distance. Hissing and steaming, hissing and steaming constantly, it flings itself against the cliff like waves. Oh, I already read that. Where am I? Uh, reaching the bottom of the pit, you step gingerly out onto the first stone. It burns the soles of your feet, but you find that if you... Am I barefoot right now? Am I barefoot right now? Did we go through... Did we go through a forest and a bald mountain and a swamp? Barefoot? <laughs> what? No wonder I've been so grumpy the whole time. <laughs> I would be grumpy too if my feet were blistering. It's good if you get deep dish. Um, okay. It's not awful. I would eat it over nothing. Images flow to your mind and you're able to see through Hinoki's eyes as an enormous lava bubble swells above the surface just a short distance from where you stand. Run, screams Hinoki as the bubble grows larger and larger. Oh no. Feet too powerful. Pushing Saffron before you- What? Oh, oh, okay. Take it away. I was like, what? Am I trying to push her into the lava? You turn around and race back over the stepping stones. Reaching the edge of the pool, you fling yourself behind an outcropping of rocks just as the now enormous, enormous bubble bursts, showering the nearby rocks with molten lava. Grunt- uh, sorry, Garfield, trapped inside Saffron's backpack, yowls in fear and claws frantically at the stiff material. Do you really think we can do it? Asks Saffron, poking her finger through a charred hole in her cloak. We've got to, you say. Please turn to page 23. I think we're due, due for a decision soon. What do you say? Yeah, Hobbit. He's got, like, his feet are caked in hair. Oh, that's Saffron. She doesn't look like a child or a rat. Well, she does, she does kind of look like a rag bag. <laughs> Endearingly, she does kind of look like a rag bag. But she doesn't look like a child at all. She looks 30. 
So does Morgan. Morgan's kind of a hunk, though. Look at that jawline. Got the, uh, the Freddy from Scooby-Doo haircut. Look, Morgan, watch for a minute. There seems to be a pattern to the bubbling, says the little dragon. And though his steady gaze, and through his steady gaze, you watch as another bubble grows larger and larger and bursts. You continue to watch as bubble after bubble swells and bursts. If we time our approach right, we could probably get through, you murmur. And once more, you and Saffron edge your way out onto the frightening path. Crouching low, the bottoms of your feet growing hotter and hotter, you wait until your next bubble bursts and then race across the rocks. Hold on, inconsistency. She's not wearing a backpack. Where is Garfield? Simping for Mor I'm just saying, I would never... I would never simp for Morgan because he's actually a terrible, terrible person. And I don't like him. But he does have a nice face. Okay, just as you reach the far end, Saffron slips and teeters back and forth, trying to catch her balance. You hesitate to touch her for fear of upsetting her balance completely, and you stop breathing until she regains her footing and stands firmly on the rock once again. Although her face is white and pale, she glares at you and says, Don't just stand there, move! In a very short time, you reach the foot of the island. Relief turns to puzzlement as you stare at the sheer black rock that rises straight up out of the sea of lava. Although the path ends at its base, there does not seem to be any way up the slick surface. What do we do now, you wonder aloud? Whatever it is, we'll have to do it fast, thinks Inoki. The lava seems to be getting closer. It's like a tide and it's rising. Look, says Saffron. Turning, you glance down at the long skirt she holds out for your inspection. To your horror, you see that the edge is singed and steaming. Following her pointing finger, you see that the lava is now nearly to the top of the rock you're standing on. Several rocks are completely buried under the molten mass. It is obvious the level is rising steadily. I hope my feet are strong enough. Okay, we're at yet another pole. New pole. Lava zone. Maybe there's still another wish in Zed's ring. We could try to use that. Turn to page 27. Much as I hate it, I could use the spider climb spell. Why do I hate that? We could do more magic. I know what I'm voting for. Yeah, we don't want to waste another wish. That could go really badly. Because um, we've already used one, right? So if we go in for another wish, either nothing happens, or later on, we don't have a wish, and that could be really bad. Um... Okay, we're at, we're at everybody's at on the same page here, so I'm going to end it here quickly to speed things up. Okay, so now we go to 27. Oh, I went too far. I went way too far. Okay, opening the little other pouch, you take out the gold band and slip it onto your finger. Once again, you marvel as it shrinks to your... Oh, did I do the wrong thing? I did the wrong thing. I meant to do Spooner. Okay, 33. Okay. I've always hated the spell, you say, pulling out a tiny vial and a small round box. Why? asks Saffron as she stands on tiptoe and looks anxiously at the rising lava. Shuddering, you uncork the vial and drink the potion it contains. Then, fighting a surge of distaste, you take the lid off the box, reach inside, grab the wriggling spider it contains, and swallow the spider whole. Uh, that doesn't end well for you, Morgan. I heard a story once about a lady who swallowed a fly and then swallowed a spider to eat the fly. And it got pretty out of control. I think we might have we might have picked the wrong one for Morgan. You're not supposed to swallow it, lectures Inoki. You're supposed to eat it. If you want to eat a spider, you do it, you choke. It's all I can do just to swallow the cursed things. I hate doing that. Just imagine how they feel, says Inoki. Yeah, being alive in my stomach as they slowly digest. I can't believe you just did that, says Saffron, staring at you with her big blue eyes. Good grief. Good grief. Charlie Brown. Morgan Brown. <laughs> Eating Noki to catch the spider. I'll eat Garfield. Eat Garfield to catch the spider and then eat... <laughs> and then eat, um, eat Saffron to catch Garfield. <laughs> 
It's bad enough having to do this without your comments, Saffron. Unless you want to turn into a cinder, get over here and put your arms around my neck. Why, Saffron? What do you mean, why? It's so obvious, Saffron. Because it's the only way we're going to get out of here alive. With a last look at the rapidly advancing lava, Saffron picks up her skirts, moves over beside you, and wraps both arms around your neck. Don't let go. Whatever you do, you caution. Then, turning to the glassy rock face, you place both hands and a foot upon the slick surface. Only one foot. You feel the slippery surface taking on a new character under your sensitive fingertips. Tiny cracks and crevices you cannot even see reveal themselves to your feet and hands. As surely as if you are walking on a level surface, you scramble up the side of the cliff. Hinoki circles above you, lending encouragement, encouragement, but Saffron hangs from your throat, threatening to pull you from your hold by her weight. To make matters worse, Garfield, back inside Saffron's pack again, keeps bumping up, bumping up against your legs, threatening to trip you. Put your arms around my shoulders, not my neck, you croak as your breath grows short. Abruptly, the pressure eases as Saffron transfers her grip to your shoulders and wraps her legs around your waist. With great relief, you quickly scramble the rest of the way up the side of the cliff and finally crawl over the edge. With a deep sigh, you collapse on the flat surface and try to regain your breath. We did it, we lived. So many harrowing moments. We must have passed our strength check. Okay, 118 it says. That's 36. <laughs> That's not 118 at all. Also, we never really figured out what this picture is. Oh, is that a close-up of Hinoki? And then that's the, uh, the mind missile going over his head? Oh, I see. Okay, 118. Curiously, you look around you. The island is larger than it appeared at first. Made entirely of the glassy black stone, it seems to harbor no life of any sort. Where is Zed? asks Saffron. I thought he'd be up here. I don't know, but the island's bigger than it looks. Maybe there's something we can't see. Inoki, you take the right side of the island. Saffron and I will take the left side. Holler if you see anything. Saffron, you try for an ESP detect, just in case you- An ESP detect? What the hell is an ESP detect? ESP. Extrasensory perception. Okay, so that's her- that's her thought thing. ESP detect sounds like a- like we're playing Apex Legends, and that's like a technical term, like, okay, around the corner, go for an ESP detect- oh! Enemy down. Enemy down. He's low. One shot. ESP detect? Morgan, I'm gonna let the cat out of the bag- cat out of the bag, if you don't mind. He's going crazy in there, and he can't hurt anything up here. Oh, and he can't hurt anything up here. All right, you say reluctantly, as Saffron opens the bag and shakes out a very angry Garfield. To your surprise, instead of attacking you or doing something equally dreadful, the cat sits at Saffron's feet and starts to groom itself as though nothing had happened. Come on, Saffron, let's get going. Use your amulet as we walk and see if you can pick up any stray thoughts. Just described Bloodhound. What is Bloodhound? The two of you walk around the edges of the black glass island without seeing anything. The edges fall straight into the ocean of lava, which crashes against the sheer walls below. Above, there is nothing but the empty sky filled with heavy clouds reflecting the angry Red Sea below. Morgan, I can't find anything with the amulet. I don't think there's anyone but us up here. And the walls are so steep, I don't see how anyone could be hiding down there. Garfield, why are you acting like that? Stop it, you silly cat. Silly Garfield, Apex character. Oh. I've, uh, I've played Apex like one time. I don't really know anything about it. Ah, uh, they detect you. Oh, literally, they have an ESP detect, of course. I actually knew that. I'm a professional Apex player. Garfield is crouched at your feet, his back arched like a drawn bow, with every hair on his body standing stiffly upright. Taking tiny, mincing steps, he growls deep in his throat and hisses menacingly. What is your crazy cat up to now? That's what I want to know. You sigh as Garfield presses himself firmly against your leg. Maybe he just wants me to pet him. Maybe he just wants me to give him back scritches. Um, okay, by the way, we are nearing the end of my time slot. We're going, probably got another eight or nine minutes left before I'm going to end it. So we'll see how far we get, and um, I'll pick up on my channel on Tuesday during my normal time slot. But I'll talk more about that whenever we end. Okay. I don't know, says Saffron. He usually only does that when he's scared of something. But I haven't seen anything to be afraid of. 
What a fool I've been, you cried, clapping a hand to your head. Saffron, just because we don't see something doesn't mean it's not here. Zed is a high-level magic user. He could hide himself any, with any number of spells, and we'd never be able to detect him. You mean he could be two feet away from us and we wouldn't even know it? Whispered Saffron. Sure, but you don't have to whisper. I'm sure he's not that close. Oh, Garfield, quit crowding me, you say impatiently, giving the cat a shove with your leg. That's so rude! Tuesday, yes. Uh, I stream every Tuesday, 5 to 7. I stream on the weekends more. I do occasionally, but it's... It's college. <laughs> it's hard. It's hard, you know? Got homework. Got a job. Without really meaning to, you use too much strength. Garfield flies through the air. I just punted him. I punted the cat. What are you doing, Morgan? You don't have to punt him. Yowling horribly, he stretches his long, sharp claws and tries to save himself from falling. Oh my god. Uh, welcome back, by the way, Kate. A muffled curse comes from nowhere. Then before your startled eyes, a hand clutches Grun Garfield's neck. A hand that is soon joined by the rest of a body. We found him. You stare silently at the small wrinkled figure standing before you, glowering with hatred. Uncle Zed? I'm no one's uncle, sneers the old man. You are nothing to me. I waited 999 years and that's the first thing he says to me? But you mean something to me, you say respectfully. <laughs> and quickly you tell your uncle of your mission. Long have I thought of you, you add. You were my guiding light when I was a small boy. I never tired of hearing the stories of your marvelous deeds. I yearn to be as great as a magic user as you when I grow up. Oh, you're to sleep for a bit? Yeah, you've been up you've been up since the uh, the beginning of the stream, no? So, yes, <laughs> good sleep. What use I have for goodness and light? Only weaklings have need for them. All that is powerful, all that is important in life is evil. I have pledged my life to serving evil and now I will reap its rewards. He has Garfield, look at that. If you truly, if you are truly my nephew, I offer you the chance to join me. We alone will live while the rest of the world dies. If you are not with me, you are against me, and you can die along with the rest. What say you? You look around dazed. Saffron stands frozen, clasping Garfield to her chest. Her red hair blows wildly about her frightened face, her eyes blue and clear in the strange light reflected from the sky. What about Saffron, you cry over the rising wind? The girl doesn't matter. No one matters. She will die along with the rest. You must decide quickly. Give me your answer. The hour is at hand. The dragon of doom approaches. The sky is filled with jagged flashes of lighting, lightning, and the clouds churn madly, glowing orange and yellow and green. Odd color for lightning. Below the cliffs, you hear the crash of lava cascading against the black walls. The wind whistles past your ears, keening a song of madness. Decide, screams your uncle. Okay, this is going to be the last poll before we uh, before we get off for the night. Okay, our first option is I will do it, you cry. I will cast my fate with yours. We're going to abandon humanity. The second option, I cannot do as you ask. Nor can I believe that anyone can hate the world so much. It's not too late to change your mind and return with me. You can try to convince him to uh, come back to the council. Or finally, I would like to do as you ask, you say, stalling desperately for time. But I'm confused. May I consult my pseudo-dragon? Okay, we can try to stall, maybe come up with something else. Okay, let's see. We managed to join him? You took a nap from 8.30 to, to 10 a.m., but other than that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, get your votes in. Get your votes in. Remember, you can vote multiple times if you use your channel points. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Are we gonna join him? Are we gonna forsake humanity? What about the council? Okay, it's splitting. You can spam vote with channel points and uh, push it to whatever you want. Oh, it's 50-50. It's 
if it's 50 50 we're gonna have to do another coin flip oh but no we, we got one more person on i two more on i'll do it three oh it's climbing both of them are climbing we're back to 50 50 eight and eight this is the most votes we've gotten on any poll but the time's running out nine to eleven i cannot do as you ask okay 131 we are standing against him the strongest mage the strongest magic user zed's mouth opens and a terrible dry sound issues from his thin lips with a start you realize that he's laughing Whoa, this is Zed, all signs of humor absent from his sharp features. What have you to offer that could compare to what I shall gain from the Dragon of Doom? I offer you love, understanding, and the respect of your peers. Ha! What do I care about such matters? I dismissed them long ago, early on in my years of exile. Where were all those who cared about me then when I needed them? Uncle, there have always been those who care about you. My mother, your sister, died with your name on her lips. You were never forgotten. I no longer care for your world or anything in it, but those few who are left alive after the dragon comes will have cause to remember me. My name shall be legend. Your name will be hated. You'll be cursed by the entire world. You scream above the rising wind that whips your words away. Ignoring you, your uncle lifts his hands toward the lightning lashed sky and laughs maniacally at the sight of an enormous shape that fills the sky above you. Doom is almost upon you. If you want one last chance to survive, return to page 122 and choose again. But we made our decision. Standing firmly on the floor, you place the... Oh, wait, hold on. <laughs> no, wait. No, way. <laughs> that's, that's it. it makes you go back. You don't get a choice. You have to go back to page 122 and choose again. Okay. Never underestimate my power. I've been watching this channel for years. <laughs> we got thousands of points. All right, well, we're re we don't have time to do this right now. But on Tuesday, for my next time slot, which is 5 to 7 here on the same channel, we will finish this book. We might uh, explore some of the other options. 12 12k in climbing. Nice. Well, anyway, thank you so much for everyone who watched, everyone who donated. Uh, QR code is on the screen if you still want to give us money for a scholarship. <laughs> um, we join him on Tuesday. Yes, that would be so much fun. Th this book is actually really intense. I, w I didn't know that it was going to be so um, involved. Because I've heard, I've heard podcasts read out some of the other books and they're not very good. But this one's actually good. Um, next up, I believe, is... Let's see, a panel with it's an interview i think up next we have an interview with people about um playing on an ou esports team so stick around if you want to hear about that um as soon as i go off they will go right back up but i'm gonna leave it on uh gonna leave it on the ending screen for a second while i make sure that they're ready oh no oh no i forgot to fix it there <laughs> there's our ending screen anyway thanks for watching make sure you follow this channel and click through in the title to my channel and give me a follow as well. And hopefully I'll see you on Tuesday, 5 to 7 for the finale.